There it goes. Okay. Hi, Tim Randalls, uh, Los Alamos National Lab. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our homegrown, unprivileged container runtime called Charlie Cloud. Um, ignore the date. This is not a recycled talk. It is a recycled talk. Um, at the same time, what I wanted to do is a little bit of a live demo. So I'm going to be bold. I'm on Summit at Oak Ridge. Um, they don't know I'm doing this, but not really their problem. Um, and if you think I just changed the host name of my desk of my Mac, it's not. It's a power PC machine. So um, I'm going to get this started real quick. Um, I don't have Charlie Cloud on the system. I'm just normal old me. I don't work at Oak Ridge. I don't have any privileges there. And I hope this works. Okay, so while that's doing stuff, I'll switch back and forth. Um, so Charlie Cloud, Lanel's lightweight, fully unprivileged HPC container runtime. Let me just get this going. What I'm doing here is building Charlie Cloud in my home directory. It really is fully unprivileged. Um, and one of the things that we're proud of this year was the fact that we got um, the ability to do fully unprivileged builds of containers now. So what used to be in the past, we told folks use Docker, use Builda, use Podman, use something on, on your laptop to build your application. But we know that that's not really what our scientists want to do. Um, so when we wrote Charlie Cloud, we focused first on the runtime. We said, there are other tools to build a container. Let's get the runtime solid, get it working. Um, and then in the past year, we've come up with this thing called CH Image, um, and it is fully unprivileged image building and management. So there are no set UID helpers. Um, when I say fully unprivileged, we're using unprivileged user namespaces here. So there's no set cap stuff like the um, UID, GID mappers that Podman, for instance, uses in its rootless mode. It's purely unprivileged. Um, it's allowing our users to build their application directly on our HPC systems in all of our environments, our open science, our, um, our, our secure machines, and in even more restricted environments than that. Um, we do have, oops, sorry, we have registry support. So this thing called CH image will push and pull. Kind of need the pull to be able to do the build because you have a from line in your Docker file. Um, let me see here. We should have, so what I've just done is installed Charlie Cloud, and I made a typo, but um, it's there now. We'll back out of that and switch in. What I'm going to do is build Clamor, which is a, a an adaptive mesh refinement uh, hydrodynamics code, but it's a little one, so it's just a test app. Here's a Docker file that I'm going to use. Should look pretty similar to what you've seen before. Um, we're going to be pulling a PowerPC 64LE image. We're going to use Debian. We're going to do some stuff. Um, to, to, to install a bunch of um, packages into that image. And then we're going to clone uh, the Clamor repository and do a quick make. So we're going to use the ch image build command here. I'm going to get this running, and it'll take a little bit to run. Uh, something I mentioned back here is that I did not mention, but it's here. There's a force option that we have now. And what that does is it automatically injects um, fake root or sudo not sudo, but sudo, uh, the commands in there. And those are our system call interlopers that will um, inter intercept calls for things like chone and tell the package manager, oh, yeah, sure, it's fine. Um, that just worked the way you thought it did. And it allows you to install troublesome packages like OpenSSH and, and systemd and some other stuff. So we'll kick this build off, and then I'll go back to my slides. You'll see it uh, did a pull here from Docker Hub. And we're going through all the package installs. So while that's going on, I thought this might be interesting to you folks. Um, don't write a tool that knows how to push and pull to registries. Um, it's not fun. It's a uh, convoluted mess. Um, this is a little test matrix of what we've tried uh, with Charlie Cloud CH image pull and push. Some stuff works, some stuff doesn't. People will tell you there's a standard. There's no standard. Um, there is a standard, but it's open to interpretation. Um, and you know, a lot of what, we're, what I'm showing here goes down to Lanner's, Lanner's container strategy. So um, the, our, our main mission users are part of the advanced simulation computing thing, the, the ASK in the slide, ASK integrated code teams. And they are adopting containers um, for all of their future code deployments or, uh, or application deployments. They are no longer going to build binaries 
um, and then put them somewhere in a shared file system and tell their users to update their, their job scripts to point to the new version. It's going to be all containers all the time. And that's all they're going to use. Um, so there are reasons for this. They're not hard to imagine provenance being the number one, one, uh, number one reason for the, for the code teams. Right now, we are heavily relying upon environment modules. Um, they don't always control all the environment modules. Some of them are provided by the systems folks at LANL. Some of them are provided by themselves. Um, they also don't like environment modules because it's like it's not 2005 anymore, and SPAC exists. So they really want to use SPAC to build their applications. Um, and we're doing a lot of work right now to make sure that Charlie Cloud works well with SPAC to be able to containerize their applications. Uh, ah, we see here now we're into building Clamor. Um, in a container over on Summit. So this will take a little bit of time to run. I think it uses CMake and Clang or something like that. Um, so we're addressing a bunch of requirements. Uh, one thing is that we're thinking of going to Red Hat's UBI for all of our supported base images. Um, that would allow us to take advantage of Red Hat's security scanning and publication of what all RPMs are in the base as opposed to pulling something off of God knows where like I did just now. Um, and it finished. Uh, I don't know what's in this Debian image, but we want to know what's in the Debian image. Um, split brain uh, presentation is fun. Um, so the big benefits we think from the container strategy allows our code teams to have the total provenance of their applications. They control the application, the runtime, and all the libraries it was built with. Um, it helps our users build provenance for the simulations. What Charlie Cloud does, and I'm not actually going to show uh, this workflow. What I'm doing here is pulling it out of my build cache and turning it into a tarball to deploy it on Summit. That just works anywhere. The workflow we're going to be using to distribute applications at scale is to, um, is to turn this into a squash FS and mount it over Luster everywhere in an allocation, kind of like uh, Shifter Image Gateway does. Uh, real quick so I can run. This, I think Ryan had a question. I saw it pop up, but I didn't get a chance to read it. All this is doing is untarring it into a temp file system. You know, it actually finished. And then we'll try to run the application. Um, not that one. Not that one either. There we go. Now we're just going to, and there we are. We're running the clamor um, out of the container image. I think I'm probably out of time. Let's see what Ryan had. So it's a versioning issue. Aha, um, versioning issue that users have in their respective job scripts. Um, let me think about that for a second. Um, the versioning issue that users have today with their job scripts. So our job scripts are massive. It'll have a module purge and then a module load of gazillion things, and then they'll point at whatever application they want to run that needs all these modules today. Um, they don't, they're not real good at changing the 15 different module things. If this is addressing your question, I hope it is, Ryan. I should pull up my window so I can see if you're nodding yes or no. Um, so a common one was the default version of HDF5 changed. The application gets rebuilt, uh, is not yet rebuilt against it. So HDF5 output in the application breaks when a user just reruns the job script they've been using since the last release of the application came out. Another problem, another spin of the same problem is um, the application is using a specific version module for HDF5. They tell their users, if you want to use this application, load this module, the user forgets to do it, and they're still grabbing the default. What we want to do is put all of it into the container so that we're not pulling in things dynamically. Um, and breaking applications. We know by looking at our past tickets, it's really going to reduce the number of support tickets that we get from our users. Um, and in our testing of this, our most problematic users, which we approach as, hey, friendly user, we know that you'd like to try this new technology, they suddenly stopped putting in tickets about why did my application die? Because they didn't have any control over their application. They just ran the command that the, the, the code team told them to run. That makes sense. Tim, what's the situation with OpenHPC support for Charlie Cloud? Is it still good? Uh, I don't think it's ever been good. Um, it was in there when Reese Baird was sort of babysitting what version of Charlie Cloud was in OpenHP 